Hello everyone, welcome back. I've been, uh, elsewhere. Not important. The good news is that I brought something back for us to look at. This is a prison-issued gaming console made by ClearTunes. It is a very rare and pretty interesting device, and we got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Now, before we get into the unit itself, I'm sure some of you are wondering, how the hell are prisoners able to get games behind bars? Well, it's not as unusual as you may think. I first heard about this back in 2010 when there was a news report about some prisoners in the UK who turned a PS1 into a tattoo gun. Those are some hardcore PlayStation fans. So there are other parts of the world where prisoners have access to video games. And according to this news story that I found, some prisoners in the US are able to get more modern hardware. But it really depends on what state you're in, it's not something available nationwide. So if you're going to commit crime, make sure you do it in Oregon, Utah, Kentucky, West Virginia, Maryland, or Maine. Other channels won't tell you that. That's the Stop, Drop, and Retro difference. Stop, Drop, and Retro is not responsible for crimes he orders you to commit. The one that I have appears to be more readily available, and according to the splash screen, it was made in 2011. And this isn't the only prison-related thing that I own. I've been able to obtain a few other items from the inside, including a TV, an alarm clock, a tablet, and even a phone! I don't know why I'm so drawn to these items. It must be something about owning an item that the general public isn't supposed to have. It's like if you own something from North Korea. So how does a prisoner obtain these? Well, you can't buy them off the street. And even if you could, you wouldn't be able to send it to an inmate. For inmates and their families to get items, you have to order from the special catalog. This catalog has all sorts of stuff. Prayer rugs, socks, typewriters, and these handhelds. There they are, and at the time they cost $35. And I'm saying handhelds because there's more than one and I happen to have two. I have the models HG501 and HG503. I'm pretty sure there was an HG502. I've seen some documents where that model is listed, but I have not been able to track one down. You'll also see some other handhelds that were available. And on the front page you could see the Tetris model. Weirdly enough, I don't think that one has a clear case, and it's widely available. There doesn't seem to be anything special about it. Now let's get into the unit itself. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers might even recognize what this device is based on. It's based on a cheap handheld from a company called Lexibook, and it retains most of the features from that. This device had a lot of spin-offs. I even have this official Ferrari branded one. Imagine the scope of people who played this thing. You have some bratty kid playing the Ferrari one, while his dad convicted of fraud is playing the ClearTunes one. When you look at the unit from the outside, the most obvious difference is that it has a clear case. Almost everything ordered from that catalog has a clear case to it. Even the typewriters. The reason why is, well, clear. It makes it much harder for an inmate to hide a weapon or contraband or anything they're not allowed to have. But unfortunately, that makes it hard for me to show you the markings with a camera. But they're identical to the Lexibook, so I'll just show you with that one. You can see it has a D-pad and four face buttons, but two of those buttons are just turbo buttons. The left button powers it on, and then the other ones are reset and pause. It has a volume knob, a headphone jack, and video out. I've got to rant for a sec about the video out, though. Most handhelds like this use a 3.5mm jack for video out. It's a cable that's really easy to find. It's like an industry standard. However, these ones use this tiny little plug. I don't know why they went with this. I had to look everywhere for the right one, and when I do have it connected, it's so unstable that it causes connection issues. The only reason this thing exists is to piss me off. Moving on, there are some other differences. Instead of Phillips head screws, the screws on the unit are like those triangular security screws. I guess that's to make it harder for the inmate to tamper with it. And on the 501 model, it doesn't have a screw for the battery cover. I don't know if it ever had one there. If it did, an inmate probably turned it into a battle axe by now. But I'm thinking it didn't have one, because on the later 503 model, that hole has been filled in. To my knowledge, that's the only difference in plastics between the two. You'll also notice that both the Lexibook and the ClearTunes model has this rope attached to it, and you may now enter the comments and make your obligatory soap on a rope joke. The Lexibook unit also only has 20 games, whereas this one has 50. The ClearTunes model also has a bigger and better screen, and I don't think the Lexibook unit even has the correct screen resolution. When you compare them side by side, the Lexibook screen is a lot grainier, and to my eye, I don't think that's because it's smaller. I think it's the wrong resolution. When you add in that it has fewer games, it's crazy to think that the prison handheld is better than the civilian one. Also, one of my units has the original owner's last name and inmate ID number stenciled on the back, which is very common when it comes to inmates' personal property, but I will not be showing that to you because if I did, he might murder me. The other unit is totally unmarked, so it's not a practice that's done nationwide, it really depends on where you're at. 
When you turn the unit on, you see a logo for a company called JungleSoft. I found out that JungleSoft is an alter ego for a Chinese company called Jungle Tack. They make other handhelds, including, of course, the Lexibook unit we saw earlier. Both of the units have 50 games, but we're not going to look at every one of them. This thing defines the word shovelware. So I'm just going to look at the ones that I really liked or found super interesting. The first game is called Tiger Rescue, and it's an overhead shooter. And it's not too bad either. It's pretty standard, but it's fun. We're off to a good start. The next game might have our first example of English. It's called Lighting Plan. It's pretty much a side-scrolling version of the previous game, but yes, it's called Lighting Plan, not lightning like lightning in the sky or the lightning fighter jet. Lighting Plan like how you would design a porch. This one's not too bad either, but it feels a little more repetitive than Tiger Rescue. Game number three is Deep Storm. It's another shoot 'em up and this one tries to do like a 2.5D thing. It's neat, but it's really hard to know if something's about to hit you. The bosses are also really interesting, but there's tons of slowdown. And this game doesn't seem to be that demanding, so it must be really, really weak. Game number four is Jewel Master 2. It's a columns ripoff, and it pretty much sets the tone for what most of the console has. It's a lot of pattern games and one screen puzzles, stacking games. Shovelware is a generous description. Moving on to Squirrel Bobble, this is a pretty decent game. It's one of those games where you're like shooting bubbles and then making other bubbles fall down. I forgot what game it's based on, but it's not that bad. Treasure Hunt seems to be a Load Runner clone. All you have to do is collect all the gems and find the exit. Just like Load Runner, you could dig these holes in front and behind you. But the weird thing is that as far as I got in the game, there's no enemies. In Load Runner, the main reason for digging those holes is to trap enemies. But in this one, it seems you just use that to drop down. I guess they're trying to be different by removing features? I don't know. Go Bang is some sort of a hieroglyphics puzzle game, but I can't figure out how to play it because the music is pure torture. I don't know what it is. Every time I hear it, I get a splitting headache. I don't know what's going on. I'm usually not sensitive to that kind of stuff. But every time I try to play this game, I feel nauseous. I have to turn it off and lay down for a while. It's just weird. We're moving on. Ball Blaster is kind of fun. It's similar to that Squirrel Bobble game. I've seen this game on a lot of cheap handhelds, and it's not too bad. Feet Sort is a box moving game, and it stars Gus from Disney's Cinderella. It's not even a ripoff of him with like a different hat color or something. It's just him. They're not even trying to hide it. It's kind of ironic that a handheld for prisoners has stolen IP on it. Next is Get the Meat, and I think that's another misspelling, because I don't think it's supposed to be like meat with people. I'm pretty sure they meant meat as in like food, because that's what you do in the game. Your character is a caveman, I think it's a ripoff of Joe and Mac, and you have to go through this maze of doors collecting food and dodging enemies. It's not that great, but I thought it was interesting because the character might be another stolen IP. Firefighter is a good game. It might even be a great game. It's one of those trampoline games where you have to save people, but it has different levels, the music is tolerable, there's bonuses to pick up, and some level of strategy involved. It totally stands out from the other games here. I also think it's funny that when you save everyone, there's a helicopter that comes and just bombs the whole place. Great job, firefighters. This is one of the few games I can honestly say that I had fun with. Potball is a ripoff of Ping, and it stars Ness from Earthbound. The game is pretty awful because your shot only goes so far, your character moves way too slow, and that makes it really hard to complete a stage. Mr. Onion seems to be a ripoff of New Zealand Story, and when I look this up, it seems that there's an alternative title to this game, because it also goes by the name One Day of Mr. Potato. Something about that is very amusing. Like, he's not having a good day or a bad day. This is just a regular day for him where he has to rescue a female Kirby. Seek Resources is a very simple maze game. You just have to collect everything while dodging these tanks. It's not that bad, but the game preys on your boredom and that's how it kills you. Plumber is a side-scroller where your character jumps and collects things, and he's a plumber, I don't know if that's enough to call this a Mario clone. It plays alright, but there's no music. Then again, on this handheld, if they added music, maybe it would make the thing crash. You need to collect all the keys and get to the end, but it doesn't tell you that. So if you don't have all the keys when you get to the end of the level, you're just stuck there. When that happened, I realized the character has a really weird blinking animation. It's like he has no eyelids, but his pupils blink. Imagine if you were out walking around and you saw someone do that. It freaked me the hell out. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is that? He's doing a little dance and shaking his ass. Kind of weird for a game without music, but now it makes sense why you're collecting all this stuff. It's to set my drink on that badonk. The next two games are dumb, but I feel like I need to show them to you because if not, somebody's going to ask for it in the comments. 
Manic Troll is a claw game where you're trying to get coins. I have no idea what's so manic about it or why it has troll in the name. I don't know, maybe the name itself is a troll. Brave Kaka is a Mario Brothers clone, but way worse. The game works on like a grid, so you can't just jump anywhere you want to. You have to stop exactly where it lets you, and then you could jump and hit enemies. It's so weird when these companies clone a game and manage to make it worse. Ghost Smile is a maze game which is actually not that bad. You're a centipede that has to collect coins, and if an enemy touches you, you blow up. Hero Legend is a game where you have a hammer and you get to throw enemies like a frisbee. It's kind of like the same mechanics behind Bubble Bobble. It's actually pretty good, I had fun with this game. Go Kart is a racing game, but it's actually more like a time attack game because there's no opponents. The way the car turns is also hard to explain. It's like the driver yanks the wheel at first, and then he's really slow to turn after that. And of course they had to add in the most annoying engine sound ever. Cool Mission is a platforming game, and not a very good one at that. That's because the jump button sometimes doesn't work. I don't know why, maybe it's when too many things are on screen, but I swear sometimes the button refuses to work and then you're killed. Those are all the games I wanted to show you on the earlier 501 console. The 503 version has most of the same games, but they took out 9 of them, and I think I know why. But before we get into that, let's look at the 9 games that they added, so that it's still a 50 in 1 handheld. They added a game called Motor Rally 2. It's a motorcycle game with really bad music. It's kind of funny that the music doesn't actually loop, it just stops at the end, and then it just starts up again. And the gameplay here is so bad that you don't even need to turn. Let me repeat that. It's a racing game where you don't need to steer. Seriously, look, I'm going into a turn, I clearly have my thumb off the controls, and the game turns for you! The only way you could go off course is if you steer yourself off course. It's just terrible. Magic Cube is a Tetris clone, and let's see if you could recognize the music. It's from the game Balloon Kid. Honestly, it's not too bad. I'm not a big fan of Tetris, but I like the Balloon Kid music. I guess if you're gonna copy, copy from the best. Sudoku is just Sudoku spelled wrong. Find Pairs is a matching game. Finger Dancing is a rhythm game, but I don't think you need to actually follow the rhythm of the music. You just have to complete all the on-screen directions. Pumpkin Surprise is a grass mowing game, which seems to be an underrepresented genre. But it does include a pumpkin, which surprises me. Surf Adventure is a surfing game starring what looks like Goemon. And it's not really surfing, you just navigate on the screen collecting flowers. Smart Frog is a jumping puzzle game. And Buried Bone Treasure is one of those sliding puzzle games. Altogether, these are some pretty lame additions to the game library. Now let me tell you which games are missing from the 503 model. First off, Tiger Rescue, Lighting Plan, and Deep Storm, which are those three decent shoot-'em-ups. On and Off, which we didn't cover, but it's basically a Lights Out clone. Get the Meat, Seek the Resources, Plumber, Hero Legend, and Cool Mission. Now I said I think I know why they took out those games because there does seem to be a pattern there, but it's not related to intellectual property theft, because they did remove Get the Meat and Plumber, but the most blatant example being Gus from Cinderella is still on the 503 console. Here's what's consistent with the removed games. They all involve shooting, throwing, or hitting enemies. You have the three shoot 'em ups Get the Meat where he throws like a stone hammer or something, Seek the Resources where you're being shot at, Plumber where he throws a wrench, Hero Legend where you use a hammer, and Cool Mission where you fire a gun. On and Off doesn't give you a weapon, but that one might just be pure intellectual property theft. But you see, all the other ones have some level of violence to them, even if it's just cartoonish violence. And I'm pretty sure that's why they had to remove those games. Which kinda sucks, because most of the ones they removed were pretty good. So here's a good question, why is Gus from Cinderella in there? Well, here's the interesting thing. They did have a license to use that character. In my research, I found out that Jungle Tack made other handhelds for Disney. This handheld line was called Game It, and you can even see on the box here that that surfing game originally starred Mickey at one point. So I guess they had that game with Gus and just forgot to take him out. So Gus is there because at one point they did have the license to use him. So just think about that. There might be a person sitting on death row playing a Disney licensed game. That's adorable! 
But getting back to what I said before, the worst part of taking those nine games out is that they were some of the best games on there. And the ones that replace them are terrible. So on the 503 model, that leaves only a handful of enjoyable games, and the rest are garbage. It's like they wanted the game library to drive the inmate insane. I'm pretty sure this qualifies as cruel and unusual punishment. This handheld should be used in scared straight programs. You better not swat anyone or you'll be trading CSGO for this. I know I've been pretty hard on this device, maybe a little too hard. I have to keep reminding myself that this device isn't meant to compete with the systems you and I have access to. Just like that TV isn't going to stand up to what you have in your living room. I mean, prison shouldn't be a walk in the park, but I wonder if these devices provide some form of entertainment for their previous owners. In that context, these handhelds are very meaningful. Maybe they were cherished by their original owners. Maybe it was their favorite form of escapism while they were locked up. Hmm, only one way to find out. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in 2022!